welcome to Treating Bladder Cancer, Bladder Removal Surgery, Part 1, Radical Cystectomy Options. This is the Patient Insight Webinar from the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. We'd like to thank Bristol-Myers Squibb, the EMD Serono Pfizer Partnership, Genentech, Estella Seattle Genetics Partnership, Merck, Photocure, and Urogen for their support of the Patient Insight Webinar Series. My name is Stephanie Chisholm, and I'm the Director of Education and Research at Beacon. A radical cystectomy is the removal of a bladder to prevent the cancer from spreading to other parts of your body. It's often recommended for treatment for someone who's been diagnosed with bladder cancer. And today we are delighted to have the Chief of Urologic Pathology at the Fox Chase Cancer Center, Dr. Alexander Kudikoff with us. He's going to help you learn more about what bladder removal is, when it's recommended, how it's done. One of the areas Dr. Kudikoff will address is explaining the options to create a urinary diversion to allow for safe removal of the urine as part of that bladder removal process. Welcome, Dr. Kudikoff. It's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Beacon, for the invitation. Um, real privilege to, uh, to be here and to share my thoughts about radical cystectomy. One of the biggest surgeries that are done in surgery and really a life-changing one, but as hopefully I'll communicate, doesn't have to be one that um, prevents folks from continuing their lives and, and, and living full lives. So we, we're going to talk about life after bladder removal and what bladder removal um, uh, really entails. And, you know, this is a journey and bladder cancer is a journey uh, regardless of which path one takes, but bladder cancer, especially when uh, the bladder is removed, is a long journey and is a hard journey. Um, bladder cancer affects uh, over half a million Americans. Um, and, you know, every year about 84,000 get diagnosed, but uh, some 600,000 live with bladder cancer. And unfortunately, um, around 17,000 succumb to bladder cancer every year. Um, bladder cancer starts in the inner lining of the bladder, um, in the mucosa, it's like the inner lining of your cheek. And uh, it takes many forms. There's aggressive types, the high grade types, there's non-aggressive types, uh, the low grade types. Um, and depending on the form that your bladder cancer takes, um, it, it really drives the further management. Now, regardless of which path one takes, it's challenging. If in, for folks, the majority of folks who don't have what's called muscle invasive bladder cancer, where their bladder cancer stays on the inner surface of the bladder, there's you know lifelong scopes and scans, and one has to carefully monitor this disease. And uh, the community uh, of providers is working very hard on trying to better understand how to calibrate that monitoring and how to make people's uh, lives easier by having, having them have the scopes not as, uh, as frequently as uh, we currently do it. But um, although there's been progress, there's still lots of challenges. Uh, and then there is bladder cancer removal. Bladder cancer, um, about 25% of patients uh, have muscle invasive bladder cancer where the bladder cancer uh, has to be, where the bladder needs to be removed and a urinary diversion is necessary. Um, there, this is a space where many clinical questions remain unanswered, and there is uh, a really a giant need uh, to improve treatments um, and improve paradigms of, of, of care that we currently have now. And except for some exceptions in the recent past, those really haven't changed for many decades. And so a lot of us in, in the field really... Um, really feel that uh, th this, you know, for various cancers that, for instance, we work on in general urinary oncology, this is arguably one of the ones that needs disruption the most. Um, for instance, look at this slide. Over the last five decades, the red arrow shows a mortality from bladder cancer. So the death rate really has largely not changed despite all the uh, innovation in medicine. We've, we're, we're just starting to move the needle in bladder cancer. Um, and we need to, to move it faster. Um, so, you know, to that, <clears throat> to that end, this is, you know, the fourth, fourth most common cancer in men. Uh, you, you know, it, it's it, the, the rates of bladder cancer, the frequency is about double that in men than in women. 
And despite it being such, such a relatively common cancer, it receives disproportionately small fraction of cancer, uh, cancer fundings. This has been, um, thanks a lot, you know, thanks uh, in part to BCAN, this has improved over the years, but still um, more bladder cancer research funding is needed. And, uh, you know, I really wanna give a shout out to BCAN because this is just such a critical organization. And uh, thanks to folks uh, like Stephanie, it's just so, so well run that, um, you know, uh, over the years that I've, I, I've been a urological oncologist, I've just seen BCAN grow and uh, provide such uh, great um, uh, support to our patient community. So th thank you, BCAN, for everything, for all that you do. So we're going to talk about the following things. And I know we have about 40 minutes, and I'm going to try to get through, through it all. But um, this is, we're going to talk about diagnosis and staging. We're going to talk about cystectomy. I'll drill down into different urinary diversions and talk about sort of some of the issues that come up with these urinary diversions. Um, talk about sexual dysfunction, because this is in a lot of folks' minds, especially um, those that are sexually active, who get diagnosed with bladder cancer, and you know, becomes a, a, um, a significant, uh, obviously, uh, as a source of anxiety and, and concern. You know, a lot of questions I get about open versus robotic approach to cystectomy, and I'll speak uh, a little bit about that. And I also put in here um, a few slides on two things that I, I hear from patients often. When is the artificial bladder coming? When can we get a bladder off the shelf and, and, and make a bladder substitute? And so I'll talk to the research that's been done in that space. And uh, we'll talk about the major effort that's happening in the field about saving the bladder. You know, no, there's no better bladder than your own. So how can we save the bladder and those people who uh, generally need their bladders removed? And then we'll do some questions. So let's talk about diagnosis and staging. So this is done with, um, uh, with, endoscopic procedures with uh, what's called a resectoscope where we go in and through the bladder, we actually sample uh, the tumor, we resect the tumor, and we try to sample the wall, the inner wall of the bladder. This is the muscle of the bladder. When we talk about muscle invasive disease, we talk about disease that's invading the inner, the inner, you know, the inner, <clears throat> the in, invading through the inner lining and into the wall of the bladder. Um, so, uh, cyst view is, a, is, is something that a lot of folks have not heard about. And this is what's called blue light cystoscopy, where um, it's, um, let's see if I can get this to play. Uh, here we go. So, um, so blue light cystoscopy is a way to get a better assessment of the bladder. And you'll see in this, in this video, which is a video of a cystoscope going into the urethra. And uh, here we're going through the male, uh, male urethra, that was the prostate. And now we're in the bladder. And this is a relative, you know, this is a bladder that looks relatively normal. At the top of this bladder here, you see a bubble. This is the bubble that we brought in there with the fluid. It's distended by, by ir irrigation fluid. And um, the little bubbles coalesce into one big bubble at the top. And you'll see that the bladder looks relatively normal, but when we do find an area of tumor, which on this, uh, in this bladder is actually what's called on the anterior wall and an often missed tumor in patients, because it's, as you can see, it's hard for the cystoscope to see up there. But in, in a second, we'll, we'll, you see my hand sort of pushing the bladder wall over, through the belly and kind of showing the scope, the tumor, a very important technique to do. And you can see, that with this, um, uh, with cystia, with this blue light cystoscopy, you can see the tumor jump out much better than it does just with regular white light cystoscopy. And as I'll show you in a minute, there's basically small other little tumors that you can readily see um, that will sometimes jump out at you and that you would have otherwise missed with, um, with regular cystoscopy. So an important technique, important to uh, find uh, centers that offer this technique because uh, this, uh, this is an important step, for, especially for patients with you know, highly recurrent um, bladder cancer, allows one to get a clean slate uh, on the bladder before uh, giving intravesical therapy. 